Foundation software. And today I am very, very happy to introduce our speaker. His name is Todd DeWalt. Todd is the founder and host of the Construction Leading Edge podcast, which is one of the most popular and longest running podcasts dedicated to helping construction business owners. Over the past 25 years or so, Todd has owned a construction business. He's built uh, projects ranging from bathroom remodels to high rises, and he is now coaching construction business owners to systematize their businesses so that they can run without them. Today's webinar is going to be based on how to get out of your business, how you can make it run without you this year. So just a few housekeeping items as people are still trickling in. Um, we certainly do welcome questions and, and we'll address those as time permits toward the end of the webinar. If you could use the questions panel, if you're looking at your GoToWebinar panel from logging in, there should be a pane that reads questions. Feel free to type your questions in there at any time. Todd is going to defer uh, answering those questions until the end of the presentation. Uh, he will, however, be asking questions of you throughout the presentation. And if you want to respond or if you would respond, please use the chat window also in the GoToWebinar pane um, that should be on your screen after logging in. And that is where those responses can go. Uh, finally, there's going to be a brief commercial break uh, somewhere in or near the middle of the presentation. And one of our regional sales reps, Dylan Kilpatrick, is going to give you just a sneak preview of the uh, HQ suite of products from Foundation Software. So without further ado, it looks like we're still having some people uh, trickle in here, but I will hand it over to Todd, and I hope you guys all enjoy today's presentation. Brian, thanks so much. I appreciate the intro. Thanks for the opportunity to be on here. And for the next minute or so, while we have people joining, I'm curious who we have listening. If you could open up that chat box and just type in there the type of work you do, whether you're a general contractor, electrical contractor, the type of work you do and where you're located, what part of the world you're located in. If you could put that in the chat box, that way we can customize some things based on, on who's, who's in here. So open up the chat box if you would, take a moment and type in what type of work you specialize in and where you're located. And we'll get started in just about a minute. And while you're doing that, a couple of best practices, a few recommendations to get maximum value. One, we're going to cover a lot of ground. You're gonna get a lot of really practical, proven strategies. So I recommend a couple of things. One, have something to take notes with. Two, don't try to multitask. Don't try to avoid the temptation to check email, maybe put your phone on do not disturb for the next hour because my job is to make the next hour as valuable as possible and to make it the best hour you've spent thinking about and working on your business in a long time. So um, avoid the temptation to multitask and be ready to take down some action items. So here we go, let's jump into this. This is how to get out of your construction business and make it run without you. I'll talk a little bit about who I am, but let's talk about you for a moment. I have a question for you, I'm curious. Are you experiencing any of these symptoms that I'm going to list off? Number one, details are falling through the cracks. Maybe you feel like you hear yourself saying or thinking, I have to step in and fix things more often than I should. Seems like every problem comes to me. I'm just spending too much time in day-to-day -day firefighting. It's all in my head. Processes, systems, expectations, it's all locked away in my head. Maybe the business consumes too much of your life. Maybe you're working too many hours or you're not present at home. Or maybe you feel like life is passing you by. You could be wondering, who do we hire first? How can we possibly hire someone? 
feels like we need to hire, but we don't know who that is or how to afford it. If you're like a lot of really busy construction businesses, you say, maybe you're saying, we are constantly in reactive mode. Curious, do you feel like your customers may be losing confidence in you? Or it feels like we're just winging it. Feels like we're flying by the seat of our pants. We're just winging it. Curious, which of those, which if any of those, do you hear yourself saying or thinking most often? You just put the number in the chat box. If you do that, is it number one? Is it number four? Is it number eight? I'm curious, which of those do you hear yourself saying or thinking most often? Take a moment to think about that. If you could put your answer in the chat box. All right, and here we have, we've got uh, Holly's drywall subcontractor, Robert's heavy Sybil, Elizabeth electrical contractor, Derek excavating HVAC, commercial HVAC. All right, um, so Holly said number three, seems like every problem comes to me. Um, Calvin has a question, where can I find the chat box? It is at the bottom of my pane. If, and if you can't find the chat box, we can just keep using the questions. That's not a problem. Lindsay said, number two, I have to step in and fix things. Yeah, if you can't find the chat box, just use the questions box and type in that number. Which number do you hear yourself saying or thinking most often? Derek said number 10. Feels like we're just winging it. Leslie said all of them. Robert said number seven. Who do we hire first? Calvin said number three. Seems like every problem comes to me. Well, these are the top 10 symptoms that I hear, I've heard over after talking to hundreds of construction business owners over the past four or five years. So you're not alone if that's any good news. So let me ask you a few more questions. Think about this. What if, what if you're about to lose a key employee because of the chaos in your business? I spoke to a builder recently who lost two key people in a week because they just got fed up with the chaos. What would that do to you if you lost a key employee? What about this? What details are falling through the cracks right now? but won't show up for weeks or months. How much profit is bleeding out? Schedule overruns because materials weren't ordered, delays because decisions weren't made, free work you're giving away, maybe lost productivity, and the biggest opportunity costs, which we'll dig into these profit bleeds later on. Here's the deal, right? You, if you're a business owner, you started the business, you're wearing a lot of hats, but here's the question, how are you going to get out of it? How are you going to step away from the business? Whether it's for a long weekend, maybe to take a proper two week long vacation, to get away from your phone and your laptop long enough to learn how to fly fish properly, to go camping, go to the beach with your kids, go take your grandkids, fishing without worrying that the wheels are just gonna fall off. Maybe long-term, how are you gonna get out of it? How will you sell the business someday or turn it over to your kids, to a, a group of key employees, potentially? That's what we're gonna talk about today, how to get out of your business and make it run without you. And here's what, if I do my job, here's what you'll walk away from this with in the next 60 minutes how you can design your company to run without you and some surprising reasons why you should do that. What to do if everything about your business is stuck in your head? How you can eliminate 80% of the chaos on your job sites, schedule delays and profit bleeds, and the thinking trap that could be the root cause of a lot of that job site chaos and how to solve it, a very simple way you can solve it. You'll also uncover 
this could be a little controversial, but you'll also uncover the kryptonite to every construction software program out there. It is, if you remember Superman using superpowers except around kryptonite. It's like the Achilles heel, right? So Foundation has lots of very powerful tools, but there's one thing that makes them all weak, maybe even useless, and it has nothing to do with the software. Before we're done, you'll learn what that thing is. By the way, this thing is also the kryptonite to every other construction software program out there. So be sure to stick around and watch out for that. There are, there are three secrets that construction business owners who have successfully escaped day-to-day -day firefighting understand. Three secrets that construction business owners who have shifted over into the CEO role and out of wearing all the hats, they understand these three secrets. Three secrets really to getting out of your business. Number one is to focus on what we call nailing the handoff with your team, okay? Number two is secret that a lot of people don't believe is that growing your team can mean less work for you. And the third secret is that you can actually increase your profits by growing your team. You can actually increase your profits by growing your team. So we're gonna dig into all three of these and there is a, a bonus resource that we have available. Um, a lot of people are struggling to find good employees, but the reality is a lot of them are doing a terrible job of onboarding new employees. They're doing it so poorly that new hires change their mind in the, about the job in the first 30 days, sometimes before they even start. So if you wanna get your hands on this onboarding guide with 59 questions that your new employee needs you to answer, you can actually get it right now in the handouts section of the GoToWebinar pane. Go to the handouts section, you can see that. I'll also share a link where you can find that on my website at the end, but let's move along. Who is this guy? Who am I? Well, my name is Todd DeWalt. I am the guy behind the Construction Leading Edge podcast. This is me on the left. I have a, uh, my wife, my high school sweetheart who I married, we have four kids, a couple in college, one in high school, and our youngest, or our oldest daughter actually in the front of this picture, she is a special needs and uh, she stays with us, that's our, our oldest daughter, Madeline. And over the past five years of working with construction business owners, I've created a lot of resources, the Get Paid for Estimates Masterclass, the Construction Financial Masterclass, I run the Builder Mastermind Group. I'm the host of the Construction Leading Edge podcast, which has been around since 2014 and has 280 plus episodes out there. And also, I created the, the Systematize Your Construction Business Program last year. I've hosted live events and workshops for construction business owners since 2018. I've spoken for the Associated Builders and Contractors. I've spoken at the International Builders Show and quite a few other groups. I've spent uh, the last 25 years in the construction industry managing some big projects. Some of the biggest projects include this one. This was a 250 unit retirement community that I managed the design development construction for about a $110 million project all in. This was a 160,000 square foot new building for Valvoline in Lexington, Kentucky that I managed. Uh, these are not sections of sidewalk. They're actually 600,000 square foot industrial buildings. I've built about 2 million square feet of these. So I've been around the block, built a lot of stuff and spent the last five years getting to the root causes of the chaos and profit leads for construction business owners. And I've determined that some of these secrets are in fact true, but let's talk about a couple of myths. I run into a lot of myths and misconceptions when it comes to putting new systems into place. So curious if any of these sound familiar. I hear things like, it is really hard to get people to change. I know I need to document my processes, but where do I start? 
Maybe you've documented processes, you've created SOPs, but then nobody follows them. Or maybe these SOPs, these standard operating procedures are hiding in a Word doc lost in some shared file somewhere. Maybe you're just like, I can't get my people to change. You might believe it's impossible to, to get my team to follow a process. So the first secret to getting out of your business is to focus on nailing the handoff with your team. If you want to eliminate chaos on your job sites, this is where to start. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought, man, everything is in my head? My processes, my systems, my ideas, everything from how to estimate, what to look for, the sales process, how to qualify leads, how to schedule a job, everything is in my head. Maybe you wish you could be like this guy, somehow plug a cable into your noggin, download it and get it all out. Not, not all the crazy stuff, obviously just the good stuff, right? Well, if that's you, you're not alone. This is a common problem for that keeps people stuck in their business. And my question for you is this, is if everything is stuck in your head, what's the biggest problem that's causing for you right now? It could be that you're going back to that list of symptoms, maybe that's why every decision falls in your lap because your team doesn't know the process because it's locked away in your head. Maybe you can't really hold anybody accountable because everything's in your head. Maybe your team doesn't know the process. They don't know your expectations because they can't read your mind. If you've ever seen uh, one of the Star Wars movies, there's a famous scene in there in The Return of the Jedi when General Akbar says this, it's a trap. Well, there's a, a trap, a more specifically a thinking trap that 90, maybe 98% of contractors fall into, and it's the cause of a lot of your problems, right? You wanna know what that trap is? It's not the fact that you spend too much money on tools or buy really expensive trucks, or maybe it's not the creative use of the F-bomb in between words. Um, it has nothing to do with safety or software or equipment. It's none of that. Um, you may be wondering, what is every construction software's kryptonite? Well, it turns out that this trap is the kryptonite. If you're wondering, what, what is the thing that can seriously weaken and take the power away from your software, just like kryptonite did to Superman, and basically make it useless? Let's take a look at what that thing is. Here's the old way, right? At the most basic level, the construction company turns contracts into profit, right? That's what you're doing. You, you create profit from a contract. Here's the old way of doing that. Maybe you do some combination of free estimates, you plug in allowances in your bids, you have plug numbers in your contracts, you start projects, with missing selections or missing specifications. Ah, my favorite trap, the fast track. Let's just get started. We'll figure out the rest of it later. Just in time ordering, having scope gaps that you didn't realize, finding out the hard way. The we'll figure it out later mentality, do it yourself. Maybe that's filling in the gaps from your trade partners and subcontractors, or you just have to do it yourself. Stacks of dusty SOPs nobody looks at. You hope software will fix it. Uh, or having really overly complicated schedules. And then maybe, fingers crossed, at the end of the project, you'll have some profit left. So I'm curious, do any of these look familiar? Which of these have you been trying to use? Put that in the chat box. If Just give me a yes. If any of these look familiar, just give me a yes in the questions box. Do any of these look familiar? Yeah, quite a few yeses coming in. 
Well, this is the just enough to start trap. Just enough to get the estimate out the door. Just enough to get a price from a subcontractor. Just enough to get a contract signed. Just enough to get a permit. Just enough to start the job. This is the just, the J-E-T-S trap. The just enough to start. This is the root cause of a lot of your problems. I had a phone call, I had a, a coaching call with a client doing probably a hundred million dollars worth of multifamily construction in Western Canada. And I explained what I just explained and, and I said, what are some of the biggest problems that can be traced back to this just enough to start trap? And their new director of operations said this, what problem can't be traced back to that? So here's why I say the just enough to start trap is like kryptonite because it affects every part of your business. If you're doing just enough to start, then you are constantly putting out fires, you're constantly in reactive mode, and you won't be able to communicate confidently. You can't communicate confidently to your, your clients. If you fall into this trap, your pre-construction planning is probably non-existent because you're just trying to keep up. Scheduling becomes very difficult because you're stuck in day-to-day -day firefighting and you can't look ahead. If you're like some people, you may just throw your hands up and say, forget it, schedules never work, so why bother? You also won't have time or you won't make time to look at the big picture, do strategic planning for your business. Recruiting and hiring is really tough because everything is a surprise. Surprise, you're out of work. Surprise, you need a new project manager tomorrow. Surprise, you need a new estimator. Last but not least, it affects your financials. If materials and subs are being scheduled at the last minute, there's no planning and there's schedule delays, ultimately that affects your cash flow and your profitability. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And that's, that's why it's like kryptonite to every construction software program, including foundation software. If you're stuck in the just enough to start trap, you can't communicate proactively, you can't plan your projects, you can't schedule confidently, you can't plan, you can't grow your team. And I'm here to tell you that no software program will work for you if you're stuck in that trap. So think about it, does this, does this make any sense in other businesses? Does anybody else do this? Do other industries do that? Imagine, imagine this, imagine you ordered a really expensive truck, $75,000 truck, right? And then you received a phone call from the dealer and said, hey, Todd, hey man, that truck's coming along real, real nicely. What kind of engine did you want in that? You know, we're gonna drop the engine in that like this afternoon and we need to know right now. And you scrambled around and made that decision. And then the next week they called you, said, hey, that engine, we got it in there, but uh, what paint color did you want? What exterior package did you want? Because we're, gonna, we're doing that right now and uh, we need to know. And then same thing for the interior, same thing for the tires. What if, they, what if truck dealerships operated with just enough to start? They wouldn't, right? It's crazy. So think about this. What problems are you having because of the just enough to start trap? How many of your phone calls and messages from frustrated GCs and frustrated trade partners, how many phone calls are you getting from frustrated clients because of just enough to start? The better question we should probably talk about is how do you, how do you solve it? How do you become immune to this kryptonite? Let me show you how. After attacking this issue for the past several years, here's what I've, I've learned. Here's the old way. This is the old way. So what it looks like, if you were to cre create a Gantt chart, very simple Gantt chart, this is where the problems come from. We have pre-construction activities up here on the top, and we're trucking along doing pre-construction, and then we start construction, and we continue doing pre-construction. We have this overlap 
of pre-construction and construction, and uh, where there's overlap, there's chaos. Design changes, selections and decisions happening too late in the game. Materials getting ordered late, only to find out that it will take months to receive, or maybe it's discontinued, leading to schedule delays. Changes, questions, missing information, in a word, chaos. This is the visual representation of the just enough to start trap. So think about this. Think about the ripple effect of the just enough to start trap and of the just enough to start mindset. Your, your trade partners and your field employees get started and they have like 50 to 70% of the information they need. When they get stuck, they have a couple of options. They can either guess, you don't want that, or they, they have to call someone, right? And who are they gonna call? They're probably gonna call you, right? The same thing happens and applies to hiring employees. What happens when you hire someone and you give them just enough to start? When you fast track a project and you do just enough to get a contract signed so you can, so you can start, right? What happens then? So think about it, be honest. Are you sometimes guilty of this just enough to start thinking trap? And how does, how does this approach, how does this mindset keep you stuck in your business? So that's the old way. Here's the new way. If you want to get out of your business and make it run without you, then here's the new way. You have a pre-construction phase. It's called pre-construction because it happens before construction. You have a pre-construction phase and then a clear break no overlap with construction and there's a gap in between the end of pre-construction and the start of, pre of construction and in that gap is what we call nailing the handoff a clearly defined handoff of information accountability communication this is giving your field crews everything they need to finish instead of just enough to start having a well-defined handoff of everything they need to finish instead of just enough to start. So think about that for a minute. What would it be like if your projects were like this? If there was a true handoff, what would that do for you? Would that reduce the number of calls? Would that reduce the number of fires you have to put out? What would the ripple effects be on your team? Would your team be more stressed or less stressed? How would your trade partners feel about working with you? How would this affect your customers, right? So the new way is to nail the handoff. And how you do that, you may be wondering, here's a, a three-step process. The first step is to design your nail the handoff process with your team. That is very important. I'll talk about that in a minute. Then you create your, this is how we do it document. I'll show you an example of that. And then if you have scheduling software, then you build that process into your pre-construction schedule template. Okay. Would you like to see how you can begin designing your nail the handoff process with your team? I'll show you that in just a minute. You may be wondering, why do this with my team? I know exactly what we need to do. You might be thinking, this is a waste of time. I've already tried this and my team just won't do it. So here's why you need to do this with your team, okay? There's a thing called psychological reactance, which is the human tendency to do the opposite of what we're told, okay? So with that, another way of saying that is when you, you want to develop this process with your team because your team will run through walls to implement a plan they were part of developing. And they will find all of the reasons that your plan won't work. Have you ever noticed, have you ever prescribed a plan to somebody on your team and they're like a bloodhound for all the reasons it won't work? That this is why. So if you want your team to implement a process 
then you better get them involved. Include them in it because your team will run through walls to implement a process they will part they were part of developing. Okay, so here's how to start designing your nail the handoff process. And this is the most powerful part of our systematize your construction business program. So what you do is you get a stack of post-it notes and some wall space, get your team together, and you start with by writing the word handoff on a post-it note, put it on the right side of a your table or your wall, and then you ask the team, what would it take to have a fully handed off project? What do you need to have a fully handed off project? So you have everything you need to finish. And you ask the team to come up with these ideas. And they'll come up with tasks like, hey, we need to order long lead materials. You put that on a post-it note. We should probably have a signed contract. Maybe there's a deposit that needs to be paid. There are probably permits that need to be in hand, very likely. Your team might say, hey, we should put together detailed scopes of work for each trade, maybe even issue purchase orders. We need to have a super tight subcontract agreement. And then you may work your way back through this. And if you're a custom home builder or remodeler, you might say, hey, we need all material selections done before we get started. You might be thinking, Todd, are you saying we should have all selections done before we start? Like no allowances? We should have everything picked out before we even start the project. Yes, yes, I am. Otherwise, you're gonna get stuck in that red tangled up mess of chaos. And then while you're at it, you might think, hey, you know, during the design process, we should, there are a few things that would really help us during the design process. You might even say during the sales process, if we set these expectations and had these conversations with our client during the sales process, it would make life easier. And then you have this wall full of post-it notes with ideas that answer the question, what would it take to nail the handoff? Now, speaking of post-it notes, if you have a post-it note clear uh, next to your desk or somewhere, I recommend you write this on a post-it note, stick it on your wall or on your computer monitor with this question. How can this be the last time I answer this question? That's a good reminder because when you're asked a question, you should ask yourself, how can this be the last time I answer this? This is a good way to get out of your business, okay? And if you wanna know a good tool for doing this, for answering questions one last time, as well as what to do with all those post-it notes, the answer is, to create a process document, a step-by-step -step process document with all of those post-it notes in order. I recommend a Google Doc. We call it your, this is how we do it document. And if you're wondering, wasn't that the name of a 90s hip hop song by Montel Jordan? You're exactly right. And you're probably singing that song in your head right now. This is how we do it. So this becomes a reference document, a training guide, a place for frequently asked questions, a place where your team can go to get answers, a place where you can answer questions one last time. And then when an issue comes up, there's a question, people go there first. When there's a, when something doesn't go well, you can ask, you don't have to wonder, is this a people issue or a process issue? You can go look at your process. Wouldn't that be great to have a process document that your team could go follow. So you, if you, because you know, if you want consistent results, you've got to have a consistent process, right? McDonald's does it, Chick-fil-A does it. And if you want consistent results, and if you want your team to take ownership of things, and if you want your team to have confidence, to answer questions on their own, they have to have something to refer to. I'm going to show you a quick clip from Jeff Bowers. He's the owner of Masterpiece builders in Stewart, Florida, a custom home builder. And he recently went through our Systematize Your Construction Business program. And on the right is Leah Valgardson from our team. She's gonna ask him the question, what was the most impactful part? And Jeff's gonna talk about his experience. So let's check this out. All right. 
Okay, Jeff, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you've been now in the systematizer construction business for a little over two months. And I just want to ask you a few questions about the program so far and how it's going for you. But before we do, let's take you back to or a part of the program that you were like, oh my gosh, yes, this, this is the money for me. This is where it's really going to change my business. Yeah. Um, you guys call it nailing the handoff. And um, that intrigued me when I was talking about systematizing our business and then nailing the handoff. And I, I've, I've really come become a true believer that he's right, that the vast majority of our ills and where our, or our inefficiencies were, were just in loose specs, a lot of the, the handoff. He's, he's right. And so once I started to go through that part of the program of documenting what pre-construction process should look like for us, um, I felt like, yeah, this is this is a home run. This is this is what do you call it? The secret sauce. This is the secret sauce. So to recap, how to nail the handoff. Number one, avoid the just enough to start thinking trap. Start by documenting your pre-construction process, design it with your team, create your process documents. So you have a consistent process that everyone's following. So imagine this, imagine having all of that information in hand before you start a project. How much smoother would your projects be? What would that be like for you, knowing that your team has all of the decisions made in advance? So my question for you would be, what would be the best part for you? What would be the best part for you about having a process in place, a documented process to nail the handoff? Put that in the, the questions pane. What would be the best part for you? Like in a couple of words, what would be the best part for you about nailing the handoff? Would it reduce the number of phone calls you get? Would it reduce stress on your team? Do you think it will help or hurt the customer experience? What would that do for you? Put that in the chat box. Lindsay said less questioning. Yeah, less questions, absolutely. Calvin said reduced phone calls, wasted time. Derek said, having all our people on board about the process. Heather said, I can handle bigger picture needs instead of small tasks. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is a key, this is a lead domino to getting out of your business. Excellent, all right, lots of ground to cover, so let's move on. So there are a lot of myths about hiring people like, ah, Man, hiring people means more work for me, or I'm really busy now, I'm maxed out. I don't have time to tell more people what to do. Some people would say, why would I wanna grow this thing that's sucking the life out of me? Or maybe you just feel stuck. You need to grow, but you can't, or you feel like you can't. Any of that sound familiar? Well, what if, what if this was true? Growing your team can mean less work for you, not more work, I'm here to tell you the second secret to getting out of your business is that growing your team can mean less work for you, okay? We're gonna get to that in just a minute. Uh, for now, I'm going to turn it over to the foundation team and I will turn it over to Dylan Kilpatrick who's gonna talk to you for a few minutes. Dylan, take it away. All right, thanks, Todd. Yeah, so we're just gonna take a, a brief intermission here to um, jump in and show you about some of the new products and offerings that Foundation has to offer um, as a part of our HQ suite. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take control of the screen here, um, and everybody should be now seeing, um, seeing my monitor. 
Um, so our HQ suite is our fully web-based, um, you know, product listings uh, from project management to scheduling um, to better job cost reporting, um, being able to have a link and all these products are fully integrated with foundation. Um, so I am a client sales representative here at foundation. My email, I'll flash it now and also towards the end of the session. Uh, just to kind of keep things easy, if you do have any questions about any products or if you want any more information about any of these products, I'll have you just take down my email at some point and just shoot me an email at the end of the session just to keep um, the questions um, section a little bit easier for Todd to work with um, when you guys do get to those questions at the end of his presentation. Um, so the, you know, the flagship, the biggest piece of what we would call our HQ suite is the project management. Um, all of these products, again, are fully integrated with foundation. Um, so we have our, you know, your project management solution, uh, being able to correspond and track emails, daily log tracking, all of your standard document tracking, RFIs, submittals, change orders, subcontract agreement, purchase orders, AIAs. Um, it's super easy to set up, very easy to use. It's kind of built with, um, you know, the construction industry in mind and being able to um, keep everything very simple and standard all the way across the board so you guys are able to pick this up very easily. Next item in our HQ suite is the crew HQ. This is going to be the scheduling. Um, so this is our labor dispatch and resource management. And again, everything, like I said, everything in the HQ suite here is modular. You can purchase one without the other. Um, we can combine them and bundle them together as well. We also have this executive reporting. So this will be fully integrated with the accounting software. Um, so when you guys run all of your stuff through foundation to get that job cost reporting, instead of having your project managers or your the owners need to log into the accounting system, which they might not want to do, they can have this fully web-based link into the system where they can pull their job cost reports. Next item is our safety, um, health and safety software called Safety HQ. Uh, this again is fully integrated with foundation, allow you to do toolbox talks, track who's in those toolbox talks, who gave those toolbox talks. Um, inspections, training and certification tracking, we can bulk upload certifications, um, track trainings in here. Um, all of the forms within the system are fully customizable. Um, so if you guys have a specific form that maybe we don't have in the system, we can fully um, you know, get those built into the system for you. Um, a safety data sheet library. So we have one built out and then we can also pull yours into the system if there's something that we are missing. We can do hazard analysis, incident reporting, hopefully not too many incident reports um, or accident reports as well. Jumping off, this is kind of one of our newer ones. So everything that you've, you know, I've seen up until this point is stuff that we've had out for a little while. Uh, Takeoff HQ is something that we just released. Um, this is going to be a takeoff and estimating solution with simple customizable assemblies allow you to calculate your area, you know, length, count, measurements, bulk upload of labor and material items, uh, be able to build out your estimate, and then also push the job and the job budget into foundation with the click of a button. So seamlessly fully integrated with the accounting system so that when your, you know, estimators are done, everything's good to go, they can push that information to the accounting system. And then next item up is a little sneak peek. This is actually a product that isn't released yet. We uh, do plan on pushing this out towards the end of the year. This is gonna be our new HR management platform um, called Workforce HQ. We're gonna have employee onboarding. So we're gonna eliminate paper tracking um, and just you know, modernize the onboarding process and get you guys off of having uh, you know, an onboarding package. We can do things like, hey, you know, that onboarding guide that Todd was talking about, where you guys will give a list of, you know, items to, you know, your new your new hires that have answers to questions that they may have. We can have that fully in the system, so they have access to it. It gives it to them during the onboarding process when they're filling out all that information. Once they're done onboarding and they put in all their personal data, you press a button to push it into Foundation. It's fully seamlessly integrated, so you don't have to transmit that data back and forth and hand you know key all of that information in once they fill it out so we can onboard an employee without them ever having to come into the office um, you know before they start work last you know next item is going to be the employee self-service we can update personal information view pay stubs w2s pto tracking and submission um, and they can actually um, like i said submit pto through the system and get approved and again that's fully integrated with foundation Again, this is you know pushing for the third quarter to have this released. Um, you know, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and flash my 
uh, you know, information again here um, down at the bottom, Dylan Kilpatrick. My email is dkilpatrick at foundationsoft.com. Leave this up for a second. I would just recommend taking my email down. If you want any more information or want to see a personalized demo of any of our products, or if you'd like to get on our interest list for workforce when we do get that released, just shoot me a quick email. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep the questions in the chat area uh, pretty clean for Todd so he can get to your guys' questions in his presentation at the end. So the best place to you know get more information about that stuff I've just shown is just to shoot me an email, okay? Appreciate everyone's time. I'll let you go get back to Todd's presentation and I'll switch it over to him. Great stuff. Thanks, Dylan. Okay. All right. So the second secret we want to talk about is this. Growing your team can mean less work for you. Let me introduce you to Manish Cartier and his wife, Michelle. They own a remodeling business in Brisbane, Australia. And here's where Manish and Michelle were at before we started working together a couple of years ago. Manish was working six to seven days a week, spending eight to 10 hours a day in the field and then coming back to the office. Um, said, growth is bad. No thanks. Not interested in growing the business. We put some crucial systems in place. Nailed the handoff being one of them, plus another one I'm about to share with you. He was able to transition out of the field into the office. Revenue went up 30% with the same team. Now he's excited about growing the business. He brought in a key hire and he was able to get his work week down to eight hours a week while increasing revenue, servicing more customers, bigger team, more profitable, eight hours a week. In fact, he spent two weeks in the US. He came to one of my live events in October in Lexington, Kentucky. Spent two weeks in the US, in Kentucky and New York City. And when he got back to Australia, everything went smooth and seamlessly. He actually said he felt irrelevant when he got back, which was uh, could be a problem some of you would be glad to deal with. Here's what Manish said. He said, it, it's shown me how I can actually improve my career goals instead of being stuck in a job I've never enjoyed. The focus now to get there, I need to get these people involved. It's really changed my perspective in terms of growth. Now, growth is exciting. I'd recommend every business owner that is sick of doing overtime and weekends just to keep afloat needs to do this. There's another way to get where you want to go. So what is the this that he's talking about? What's the exercise that changed the way he thinks about growth? The exercise that Manish and Michelle said they wish they had done earlier that changed their mind about growth was designing their accountability chart for the future. Designing their accountability chart. Let's talk about what your accountability chart will do for you. Okay. The accountability chart defines each seat or each position's expected outcomes. This is very important and how they tie to the success of the organization. It ensures that everybody knows exactly who to address an issue with based on accountability, not based on who reports to whom. At the most basic level, there are three major functions in every business, regardless of what you're doing. Construction, manufacturing, services, widgets. There are three major functions in every business, at least. Sales, somebody has to go out and get work. Somebody has to sell widgets. Operations, someone has to go complete projects. They have to manufacture and deliver the widgets. And then finance, someone needs to invoice and collect the money and do all the financial stuff, okay? These are major functions of a business, sales, operations, and finance. There could be more. I'll show you an example that a lot of construction businesses use. When you think about a major function, there are a couple of principles to follow. There needs to be one name in each box. 
there can be the same name in multiple boxes, but there needs to be one person who is accountable for each major function. If you wanna start getting out of your business, then you need to start putting other names in these boxes. You need to start delegating outcomes to other people, all right? So let's talk about how to go about doing this. There are some ground rules for designing your accountability charts. Number one is to design for the future. You must look forward. Don't get caught looking backwards or get caught just looking at the present. It will require you to detach yourself from the existing business. Detach yourself from your current role. Probably it will require you to detach yourself from your comfort zone, maybe even your ego. You have to elevate yourself above the business, look down on it, and make decisions for the long-term greater good of the company. And in the beginning, no names, don't put names. This is an exercise in designing your business the way you want it to run. This is not an exercise of organizing the business around the people you currently have, okay? Here's a popular model for a lot of construction businesses. There's a sales and business development major function. There's a pre-construction function, an operations or a construction function, and finance and administrative function. Four major functions. Again, there can be more, but this is a very common model and the reason pre-construction is separate from operations and sales is because of the emphasis on nailing the handoff. And then there's the, if you're wondering, well, where do I sit if I want to get out of my business? It's a great question. You would sit in the integrator role. The integrator's role is to integrate the other leaders of the major functions, all right? John Voitas is the owner of the Paxis Group, custom home builder in Georgia. He had a team of about 14 or 16 people. When we went through the efforts of designing his accountability chart a while back, and here's what John said about his experience doing that. So you, I immediately look forward is, is probably the biggest thing. If I tried to look forward in the past, I wasn't sure that the ball was being managed right or didn't have that not trust level, but just didn't have the experience or know that the people were in those places if they could do those jobs or not. So now, um, you know, we're a few months removed from actually implementing this. And uh, it's, been, it's been really good to allow me to look, to be much more forward looking as opposed to just be stuck in the next four to six hours. And, you know, I can go a day without looking at my email right now and not worry about, oh my gosh, did I miss something that needed to be critically handled? Because I've got people that have all of those different facets. They know that they're responsible for that. And if someone needs something, then I know it's, you know, they can reach out to me and they can, or they can schedule time with me. It's not truly putting out fires in a short period of time or else it's going to, become something negative and we didn't have a lot of bad situations it was just like i said it was a lot of noise and that's been that's been eliminated you know just greatly so when your accountability chart is designed here's what you can expect you'll have clearly defined lanes there'll be clarity on who is accountable for what results there will be fewer gaps that things fall into and less toe stepping, less duplicated efforts where people are stepping on each other's toes. All of the major roles and priorities will be established. And this will allow you to delegate results instead of delegating tasks and activities. It's gonna help you avoid hiring mistakes, unnecessary hires or hiring people who are wrong for the job and all of this is gonna allow you to steer the ship. So think about that. What's gonna be, what's gonna be the best part for you? Imagine you have your accountability chart designed, clearly defined areas of accountability, 
you can delegate results. What's gonna be the best part about that for you? Put that in the, the questions box. What's gonna be the best part about that for you? I'm curious. When you have these clearly defined lanes, you can delegate results. And there's less noise, like John said. What would that do for you? All right, Cl Holly said clarity on accountability. Heather said delegate results. Lindsay said clarity on accountability. Yeah, Derek said clarity on who's accountable for what, and delegating results. Yeah, yep, that's a big deal. Good stuff. All right, moving right along. Let's talk about the third secret. When it comes to growing your team, you may be thinking, that's great, but I can't afford to hire someone. If I do, I need to sell more work to keep them busy. I've tried hiring people in the past and it never worked out. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can increase your profits by growing your team. It's likely that you can actually afford to hire someone and it's possible that you, you might be in a position where you can't afford not to. It could be killing you not to hire someone. Let me explain. Think, remember this, if you have inefficiencies in your business, you are paying for it every day. If you have inefficiencies in your business, you are paying for it every day. You're not seeing invoices for these profit bleeds, they don't show up in your bank account, but if you have inefficiencies and chaos, you're paying for it every day in the form of profit bleeds. I'm gonna show you a quick example of our profit bleed calculator. This is a fictitious example. This is a company that's doing about two and a half million dollars a year. They have three hourly employees working in the field. Average cost, 45 bucks an hour all in. That's fringes. Um, labor costs, not labor rate. They're losing about 60 minutes of productivity per day, which is pretty average, pretty low actually. On average, they're losing 60 minutes a day looking up, looking for material, picking up material, looking for information, waiting on material, going to stores, God forbid they're going to stores to pick up material, extra trips to the job sites, some combination of wasted time, lost time, downtime, could be some stolen time. That totals up to $2,700 a month. Up next is rework, building something twice, getting paid once. Maybe because of a quality issue, wrong material, wrong location, damage. A few recent examples I've heard, we painted all the trim the wrong color. We installed the siding wrong inside out we had to move some outlets for um that were behind cabinets we had to touch up drywall because can lights had to be moved bathtubs came in the plumber installed them they were wrong tile was installed in the wrong direction a big one i heard was the roof trusses were installed and it turns out they weren't designed for the hvac equipment loads that was a big one rework can be death by a thousand paper cuts could be one or two big ones per year. In this example, $2,000 a month is pretty typical. Up next is unsolicited charity or giveaways, doing work for free. Maybe a customer requested a change and we didn't catch it. Maybe a trade partner billed us for an extra and we didn't bill for it. There are throw-ins and giveaways at the end to make customers happy. The quote, while you're here type stuff. In this case, another $2,000 a month. Wasted materials, it's pretty straightforward. Eye joists, LBLs, a few sheets of plywood, drywall that was damaged, something grew legs, walked off the job, $1,000 a month. Then there's estimating misses, things that just got missed and you have to eat the cost of. Let's say $2,500 a month. Add in schedule overruns. So you, you have the general conditions cost, project managers and superintendents being tied up on jobs longer than expected. In this case, $2,000 a month. Total profit bleeds, when you add all of that up, is $12,000 a month. 
It adds up, doesn't it? When you look at lost productivity, rework, unsolicited charity, wasted materials, sales process, and estimating misses and schedule overruns, it adds up. 12 grand a month, $144,000 a year. And that's not all. The next one is what I call opportunity cost. In this case, the builder was losing about two days of production a month. You add those two days up over the course of a year and you get a month of production. That's about $200,000 of revenue, which meant they could do 200 grand of revenue at a 10% net profit, that's another $20,000 going straight to the bottom line. Actually, if you look at it, this opportunity cost could be a lot higher. Okay, and when you add all of this up, you add that to the 12 grand a month of profit bleeds, this company is bleeding out $166,000 a year. A $2.5 million a year company is leaving $166,000 on the table. So let me ask you this. If you were leaving $166,000 on the table, could you afford to make a key hire? Could you hire a superintendent or a project manager or an estimator or a project coordinator for 166 k Would you still be more profitable after paying that person? Next question. Let's say you did make that key hire, you brought somebody on, what would that free you up to do? Could you sell more? Spend more time training your people, spend more time building relationships, growing the business? And then with that key hire, could you handle more work and service more clients and increase your revenue? That's why I say you can increase your profits by growing your team. Or that's also why I say you may realize you can't afford not to hire someone because it's very likely that by plugging some of these profit bleeds and eliminating some chaos, you can free up enough money to pay for someone and still make more money. Not to mention the ripple effects on the customer experience or what it would do for your team. And I know some of you are thinking right now, yeah, but Todd, isn't it risky to hire people? Aren't new employees risky? What if they fill in the blank? What if they come in and they start a business and they turn into a competitor? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Let me ask you this. Think about it this way. If you're currently wearing all the hats, you're currently stressed out, you're currently missing details, you're currently working too many hours, are you at risk right now? Are you at risk of making a big mistake? If your team is redlining, are you at risk of a detail falling through the cracks and making a big mistake? Is your health at risk? Is your marriage at risk because of all the hours you're working? What about your relationship with your kids? Is that at risk right now? What if something happens to you? If you were in the hospital for two weeks, could your business function without you? If your team is stressed and frustrated and, and redlining right now, they're operating at or above capacity, you're probably at risk of losing someone. Maybe your team, your, your employee is okay with it, but yeah, their spouse could be at their wit's end. They could be saying something has to change. You just don't know it yet. If there's chaos in your business, is your reputation with your customers at risk? Are they starting to lose trust with you? Putting the right systems in place, bringing the right team on board reduces your risk. Employees, the right employees make your business less risky and make your business more resilient. Okay, so let's recap what we covered today, all right? We talked about how you can design your company to run without you. That's the combination of nail the handoff and the accountability chart. What to do if everything is stuck in your head. How to eliminate 80% of the job site chaos by nailing the handoff. The just enough to start thinking trap that could be the root cause of a lot of your job site chaos and how 
to solvent. Here are those three secrets. Focus on nailing the handoff with your team. These are the three secrets used by construction business owners who successfully escape day-to-day -day firefighting. These are the things they understand. Growing your team can mean less work for you, and you can actually increase your profits by growing your team. So we've been going on for about an hour now. How many of you feel like this guy, drinking out of a fire hose? Would you agree it's been time well spent? Has it, has it been valuable for you? I hope so. Well, here's the thing. There's, there's no way to cover everything you need to get out of your business in an hour or even a few hours or even a few days. So we did put together a special program to help you accomplish that. If you want to get out of your business, um, if you'd like our help to implement these systems in your business, then I'm gonna share for a few minutes about that. We have a program called the Systematize Your Construction Business Program. Builders, remodelers, commercial general contractors, specialty trade contractors have all gone through this program over the past year to learn how to implement some of the crucial systems we've talked about, plus a few other crucial systems. And having worked with these folks, I want to warn you about a few things, okay? There are a few thinking traps to watch out for. Number one, old habits are hard to break, okay? So a lot of you guys have probably been on these kind of webinars before, or you get excited, maybe you get fired up, but then what happens the next day? Probably for a lot of you, nothing. And that's sad because I just showed you the exact system other people just like you are using to get out of their business. But Unfortunately, a lot of you are going to go back tomorrow and just not do anything, okay? And, and the reason it is because old habits, they're just hard to break. So if you want some changes, if you want to be successful, the only way to do that is to break that habit. And the way you're going to break that habit is by making some changes, doing something different. When you join us in our program, we can get in there and help you. Our coaches can help you. We'll give you the tools you need to break that habit so you can become successful. But if you don't do something, if you don't take action, you're probably just going to slide right back into that old habit. And then everything we've done for the last hour will be completely useless. So the only way to break that habit is to make an investment of time and energy and money for your team, for your business, and for yourself. A lot of people would say, you know what, now isn't a good time. We'll do this, just not now. We're really busy. Well, why are you really busy? And is that going to change? Is the lack of time really the problem? Or is the real problem that you've just outgrown your systems? You may be thinking, well, what if the economy slows down? What if things change? Let me ask you this. If you have these systems in place in your business, will this make you less likely to survive a recession or more likely to, re re to survive a recession? If there is a recession, having these systems in place will make you the employer of choice. It will make you stronger and more resilient. So beware of that trap. Now isn't a good time. You might be thinking, ah, eh, things aren't that bad. Things aren't that bad. We're getting along. Well, let me ask you this. Are you really solving the issues or are you just dealing with the symptoms? Think about your stress level, your team's stress level, your profit margins. Which way are they trending? Are you, do you like the way those are trending? Is the profit margin trending downward? Is the stress level trending upward? Is the customer experience trending downward? What happens if, what's gonna happen if you wait 12 more months? What if, what happens if you wait until something breaks? Do you really wanna wait until something breaks to fix it? Or would you rather put systems in place to prevent them from breaking? And what's gonna happen if you don't solve it? I, I heard a guy, 
on a call who told me, quote, I feel like my life is passing me by. Another business owner said, I'm afraid I'm headed toward burnout again. So think about this. What's the cost of inaction? The cost of inaction. There's a financial cost of inaction. How much are you leaving on the table in profit bleeds? How much are you missing out on when it comes to your investments? How much are you missing out on with stuff that you can't put a price tag on, like your health or relationships? One big trap to watch out for is the law of diminishing intent. Watch out for this one. Jim Rohn taught a principle of the law of diminishing intent, which goes like this. The longer you wait to take action, the less likely you are to take action. Here's what it sounds like. Yeah, we should do that. That's a great idea. Or we're going to do that. And then a day goes by, and then a week goes by, and then a month goes by, and we don't do anything. So here's a hack for defeating the law of diminishing intent. <clears throat> you may be thinking, yeah, I need my business to run without me. I need to do it. Yes, this is a great idea, but how am I going to do that? Crazy busy already. My team won't get on board. You start coming up with all these reasons it won't work. You get overwhelmed and discouraged and you don't even start. Does that sound familiar? Well, here's what you need to do. Separate the decision from the implementation. Decide on the outcome you want. Decide on what you want your business to look like in 12 months. Decide what you want it to look like in five years. Don't worry about the implementation for now. Just work on the decision. It starts with making a decision about what you want. So my question for you right now, and really the only question to consider right now is, is it worth investing 60 minutes for a call to see if we can help you? If you want to get out of your business, if you want your business to run without you, then I would encourage you to go to this link, constructionleadingedge.com forward slash apply. Schedule a call to talk with either myself or somebody on my team about our systematized your construction business program. We work with a small group of construction business owners at a time, and we emphasize results. Okay, so if you'd like to see how our systematize your construction business program could help you get out of your business so it runs without you, learn about the crucial systems that we can help you put in place, go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash apply. You'll be able to schedule a call and then you'll be prompted to fill out a brief application so we can prepare for that call. I will say, who is this? Uh, I want to tell you who this is designed for. These calls are exclusively for current construction business owners. The best fit is for home builders, remodelers, general contractors, specialty contractors who have a team, have been in business for at least a couple of years, and are growing or plan to grow. Typically, they're doing over $2 million in revenue. This is not a fit for you if you're doing less than a million dollars in revenue, if you are a solopreneur and you don't have a team or you haven't started your business yet. If you've been in business for less than two years, it's probably not right for you. If you want general advice or you're planning to start a business, we are not, not gonna be a good fit for you. If you'd like to hear from some of our clients, you can go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash results and listen to them talk about their results. You can also listen to interviews with some of our clients on the Construction Leading Edge podcast, which is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, just about every other podcast player. There are lots of interviews with construction business owners and industry experts. Before you go, make sure to grab that bonus resource, the onboarding guide down in the handouts section. And you can also get that if you need the link. I have it on my website at this link, constructionleadingedge.com forward slash get out. And um, I'm going to cover a few frequently asked questions. And if you have questions about anything we've talked about, go ahead and put that 
into the questions box and uh, I'll get that. But here are a few questions that have already come in or are frequently asked questions. Will this help me if I want to sell my business someday or transition it to my kids? Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, what I found after interviewing several specialists in mergers and acquisitions is your business is unsellable. Well, let's put it this way. The only way your business is sellable is to have these systems in place. Nobody wants to buy a business that won't run without the owner. Okay, so this is crucial to selling your business someday. Um, what kind of software do I need to be using? Is this specific to a type of software? No, it is not. As I mentioned, this will solve the kryptonite to software to all types of software, but you do not need to be using a specific type of software to put these crucial systems in place like nail the handoff, accountability chart, et cetera. Um, how's it delivered? We can talk more about that in detail when you schedule a call, but it is a hybrid of online training, group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. It is designed to give you results designed to give you results. All right, uh, let's see. There's a question from Lindsay. Will you have this recording somewhere? I'd like my partner to be able to listen as well. Um, I believe that recording will be available. I believe so. Um, Brian, could uh, you comment yes, on that? Yes, we'll absolutely. Uh, it takes a little bit for it to process, but it will be uh, available through Foundation. Excellent, excellent. So Debbie said, I could not get the handout for the website address. Okay, it should be available on, on here in the handouts section. And I will, what I'll do is I'll be sending out a starter kit, I'll send out an email and I'll include that, a link to that onboarding guide as well, just to be sure that you have it. So if you've registered for this webinar, be on the lookout for an email from me with a starter kit and I'll be sure to include that onboarding guide as well. All right. Any other questions about anything we've talked about today? If so, please put those in the question box. I appreciate your feedback. Thanks for joining. Um, has this been has this been helpful for you? What here's a specific question for you. What has been most helpful about this webinar for you, if anything. If you could put that in the question box, that would be great. All right, thanks Calvin. Okay, all right, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, if you have questions that come up later, be on the lookout for an email from me and you can contact me that way. Brian, I will turn it back over to you to wrap up. And let's see, actually, before I do that, looks like a couple of, uh, couple of comments here. Heather said, yes, knowing it's actually possible is most helpful. Absolutely. Holly said, thanks for your time. Yes, the growth and accountability chart without names was helpful. Derek said, fresh ideas, having some ideas of where to improve things. Yep, good stuff. I appreciate that. Okay, Brian, I'll turn it back over to you to wrap it up. Awesome. Todd, just want to thank you for joining us today. I, I thought that was extremely informative, even uh, though I am not a business owner. Um, but yeah, very interesting stuff. Uh, I hope for all of you guys that attended that it was valuable for you as well. And um, look forward to the next time. Brian, I appreciate the opportunity and uh, thanks again. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.